Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Families forced out of their homes after a fire breaks out six stories up. We'll start right there this afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Several people now displaced from their homes after an early morning fire breaks out at that an apartment building in Indian Village in that area over there. It's Alden Towers where it happened on Jefferson and East Grand Boulevard. That's where we find our Victor Williams, who's live this afternoon with the latest. Victor, what can you tell us? Yeah, well, two people had to be treated for smoke inhalation, uh, Jason. Take a look right over here. We know that the property restoration trucks are here as well. We know that around 7 a.m. this morning is when that fire broke out right here on the sixth floor of the building. Crews got here pretty quickly and were able to put out the fire with no problem. But the only problem that they had is there was a ton of smoke, so much so that five to seven units had smoke damage. The investigation continues into what caused the fire. Another point of concern is whether or not there were any alarms going on to notify residents that their lives were potentially in danger. One woman that we spoke to said it was the smoke that made her realize something was wrong to begin with. Horrible black smoke. It was pouring in from the hallway and we there were no red lights flashing. There were no no alarms going off. You know, my daughter was panicking. She had her baby and we could we could hardly get out. I would say that is a management issue if there was no alarms no bells and whistles as we call it, no smoke detectors, etc. That happens when there is lack of preparation in a building. Uh, that could perhaps be the case. Now that was Gregory Love, former deputy fire commissioner who now lives next door at Indian Village Manor condominiums. He says that this is not the first fire to take place at the building. We'll have more on what he had to say at 5 p.m. Victor Williams. Yeah, some good insight there, Victor, and just glad everybody is okay there. We'll, we'll talk to you a little bit later on Local 4, 5, and 6. Detroit police looking for information this afternoon and suspects after a deadly shooting this morning at a Coney Island. It was at the L. George's Coney on the corner of Joy Road and Evergreen. A 34-year-old man was shot and killed in what police believe was a robbery at this point. Anyone with information, though, is asked to call Detroit police. Some good news if you plan on road tripping this Memorial Day weekend, about half of the orange barrels are going to be shoved to the side of the road for you. And those lanes will be reopened to ease traffic for the holiday weekend. Starting tomorrow through Tuesday, drivers will see lane restrictions removed on 81 out of 146 road projects across the state. I'm getting cheers from people right here in the studio. I can only imagine what you're thinking. You can find detailed information plus a weekend travel guide on clickondetroit.com. We're just a week away now from the Detroit Grand Prix in downtown Detroit. That's a first since 1991, right? With six races spanning the course of three days, the city expects a boom of business for the city. Mayor Mike Duggan says the first day is going to be free for everybody. Friday, it is free pre-day with the sponsorship of Comerica Bank, which means everything is free. You can come down on Friday, sit in the grandstands, watch the preliminary heats and see these cars, uh, the entertainment all weekend long. Take advantage of that and look out for some of our newscasts and our coverage along the course next week and on race day morning. And of course, the race itself is right here on Local 4. This season, you might notice a new patch on the Detroit Tigers jerseys because they're teaming up with Meyer. The team will go further than just the jerseys, by the way, with Meyer dedicating $100 for every strikeout Tigers pitchers record. Donations will go to food pantries across the metro. The Tigers, Red Wings, and Meyer will also continue their hometown assist program, which helps Detroit families during the holiday season. You can officially add another name to the list of candidates running for president. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis launching his presidential bid on Twitter spaces in a conversation with Elon Musk last night. But as Bree Jackson reports from Washington, it was a bit of a shaky start for DeSantis on the campaign trail. The audio only event kicking off Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's presidential bid was marred by technical issues caused by heavy user traffic, but his opponents are using it as an opportunity to take political jabs. And freedom is worth fighting for. 
The much anticipated announcement from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Well, I am running for President of the United States to lead our great American comeback. But his Twitter Spaces campaign launch came with delays and major technical glitches. Issues the platform's CEO, Elon Musk, downplayed during the event. You know, we started with some technical issues because of the sheer scale and unprecedented nature of what we were doing. DeSantis later using traditional media to highlight his priorities. The border, uh, there's a lot you can do, ripping out uh, Biden's anti-American energy policies. The Trump campaign wasted no time taking aim at its latest challenger, calling DeSantis's tech challenge launch a complete failure and blasting him in this video. Why would we ever settle for Trump imposters? A sentiment echoed by other candidates. If he's just going to be an echo to Trump, people just vote for Trump. The former president leading a growing field of Republicans vying for primary voters. And even President Biden poked fun at DeSantis's tech issues. The president posted a link on Twitter to his own fundraising page, writing, this link works. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. Politicians taking jabs at each other. What have we come to? Uh, so far, eight people have announced their candidacies. We will still wait to hear from former Vice President Mike Pence, who's also expected to run for the White House. Tributes continue to pour in for the late queen of rock and roll, Tina Turner. The entrance to her home decorated with flowers, candles, and tributes following the news of her death yesterday. Fans left notes with their names and messages outside of the gates. She uh, lived in Switzerland at the time of her death. She came to fame in the 60s and 70s with then-husband Ike, but she courageously broke free from his abuse and became a solo superstar in the 80s. According to a spokesperson, Turner died at the home in Switzerland after a long illness. She was 83 years old. Let's get to the forecast now. Uh, it, chilly morning, but it's starting to give way to what's on tap for the weekend ahead. Hey, Ashley. Hey there. So yes, today is the coolest day of the week, but overall not too shabby. Below average temperatures getting us into the 60s this afternoon. We can handle it, but it's part of a warm up as we head into the rest of the week. And of course, that holiday weekend sunshine will continue throughout the holiday and then summer like heat near 90 degrees next week. But currently we sit in the 50s all across southeastern Michigan, 51 in Sandusky, 55 at Metro Airport and Ann Arbor, 56 in Pontiac and uh, here at City Airport, 57 in Holland. That's one of our warmest temperatures on the map. You can distinctly see where the cold front was at this time yesterday, so not as cooler um, to our north where that cold front had already passed by noon yesterday, but down to the south from Wayne County southward to the state line. That's when we're noticing quite a big difference from noon yesterday to noon today. 55 degrees with mostly sunny skies downtown, even though we have a northeasterly breeze not factoring into a wind chill at the moment. Continued sunshine into the afternoon and those temperatures once again topping out in the mid 60s before before falling once again where it is a bit cooler. You woke up to a frost advisory this morning. We're back in the 40s tonight. No advisory has been issued quite yet, but if we do get one, you'll get a push alert on our forewarn weather app, so make sure to download it today. Good advice. All right, Ashley. Looking over your shoulder while driving could be maybe a thing of the past. How this luxury automaker will have you changing lanes with just one look. Plus, it turns out Detroit has the cheapest pizzas in the country. And by cheapest, I mean most inexpensive uh, or least expensive is probably the better way to say that. How much we are saving on every party's favorite meal.